Attorney Marion Allen. I'm here uh, as an attorney representing NAR Group Inc., uh, who is at uh, a lessor, a commercial uh, lessor at 62 Anthony Road in Lebanon, New Jersey. I'd like to comment on item one, which is the cannabis regulation. Um, first of all, on the cannabis regulation, as you all know, uh, you have township ordinances regarding land use. Ordinance section 400-9A uh, permits the use of certain properties, including my client's property, uh, for the growing of cannabis and agricultural uses. The current uh, proposed ordinance would ban that use, and therefore this would affect uh, the use of land. That said, I would note that I've reviewed the record, and what I have noticed is that there is a not compliance yet with uh, New Jersey Statute 40 colon 55D-26 subsection A. That requires not just that the planning committee review the statute, which I understand may have happened, but specifically that the planning committee has to call out any inconsistencies with prior zoning ordinances and also be given the opportunity then to comment on perhaps resolutions to get around that conflict. Here we have a very clear conflict, and at least in the minutes of the planning board, which were actually just met last night, and up to this date, there has been no discussion of conflicts between the new ordinance and the, uh, the pre previous zone that I just cited. That said, why, why am I speaking here? Well, as you know, the ordinance that's, that's coming up has been written. It's in clear, plain English. And it's been suggested that it only regards recreational uses of marijuana. And my client has nothing to do with recreational. He would be a very much concealed commercial use with 14 million in investment into the property. There would be no signage. There would be virtually no traffic, maybe a, a sprinter leaving every once in a while with a delivery once or twice a month. So we're not talking about anything recreational here. This is just a commercial enterprise that, by the way, would add about 20% to the tax coffers annually of this town. The way the statute is written, there is a carve out in there regarding deliveries from other towns, but there's no carve out as to class one, which is the cultivation license. It says all classes of license are prohibited. Nothing about recreational, nothing about other carve outs. So that would prohibit the use by my client for a commercial cultivation on that property. Therefore, of course, falling very squarely in the revised statutes that I was just speaking of. Again, it's been represented, and I believe everybody on the Township Committee received correspondence late today regarding the, uh, these issues. Um, and I, I will state that uh, you know we are proceeding under the uh, discretionary authority granted to us, the Township Committee, I should say, um, under the Recreational Marijuana Act. Uh, we are not taking action under the Compassionate Care Act. Uh, we are, again, as previously discussed at several meetings, we are uh, exercising uh, authority granted to us by the, the, the legislation itself. And the, step, the steps we have taken are compliant and the committee can uh, act on this tonight. And the committee, quite frankly, is aware, has been made aware that if we don't act tonight, uh, we're up against a, a, de a deadline. We've discussed that before, um, and you know it's a separate, a separate parallel, but parallel lane. So um, that that is um, for consideration of the township committee. Uh, again, if there's an additional comment during the public hearing, uh, I do again note to, to township committee that the content of, of letters, but uh, we, we are able to proceed uh, as, as uh, the agenda. So we got here almost six months ago, the state uh, passed the New Jersey Cannabis Regulatory Enforcement Assistance and Marketplace Modernization Act, shorthand referred to as CREMA. Uh, this committee began discussion almost immediately. So for nearly six months, this has been on various agendas in this committee. Uh, we did have a joint meeting with the planning board, which gave recommendations to this committee. We've received inputs from our professional planner, from our professional engineer, from members of the public, from our zoning officer. And this committee, after considerable consideration and discussion in the public, 
meetings has unanimously introduced the ordinance that we have before us, which prohibits the six classes of licenses defined by the CREMA legislation, specifically related to recreational marijuana, and the ordinance would prohibit all six classes of licenses in the township of Lebanon. Number Stephen Gruenberg, attorney in Flemington, New Jersey, on behalf of Nitin Mangrani, who is the owner of 62 Anthony Road, um, Lot 57, Lot 23, in Lebanon Township. Um, I forwarded correspondence to uh, the township today. I would ask that that be part of the record of this hearing, and also Mr. Marion's correspondence with the attachments as well. I'm not going to repeat everything that's in the correspondence, <clears throat> but you know, a as a lawyer, you know you're in trouble when you go to print out a statute and your printer keeps going on and on and on, and you start to wonder, how long is that? 340 pages. It's a book. And the problem if you're trying to formulate an ordinance that deals with a statute like that is that you got to be really careful. Um, and I don't envy the township with respect to our proposal for a medical cultivation cannabis operation on my client's property. And we were very forthright about it, what we wanted to do, because we thought it was a really great opportunity, not only for Lebanon Township, but for my client's property, which he had just purchased, which was a rundown property that everybody knows in the township that was essentially fallow for 15 years. So it graded on what we planned to do at that point. And there's some question now as to whether this ordinance makes it a prohibited use. Uh, if it is interpreted as a prohibited use, we're going nowhere with the state. They, they will just deny the application outright. Um, and the problem with the ordinance as you have drafted right now is that it it is open to interpretation because it isn't clear as to exactly what uses you're banning. And I think that was actually a statement that was made, maybe by Ms. Kohler, at the last hearing on first, on first Reef's ordinance because of how it's going to be interpreted. And the pro I mean, I'd like to go over it just a little bit with you. If you take a look at the language of the ordinance, and we'll get right to the, the, the skinny of it, on number one, under there, or be it ordained, all classes are hereby prohibited from operating anywhere in the township of Lebanon. Whoa, that doesn't say just class one, cultivation class two, whatever, they, they all are broken down. Um, it just says all classes are prohibited. Then under the next session, section, which is a little bit better, quite honestly, it says, all classes of cannabis establishments as said terms are defined in section three of public law 2021 chapter 16 but not the delivery of cannabis items as related supplies by delivery service which is located in another municipal section public law 2021 chapter 16 section three and if you go to that section the way your ordinance is just is um, defined that is a definition section it's a definition section of the statute it doesn't really break down class one class two class three class four and in fact one of the definition sections that is found within section three is there's a definition of medicinal Cannabis. cannabis dispense to register qualifying patients pursuant to the Jake Honig Compassionate Use Medical Cannabis Act. And you are at 62. Anthony Road. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nitin McGlanny. I own the old, old diamond aerosol factory uh, at the lot, the block 57, lot 23, in Le Glen Gardner, Lebanon Township. Those of you who have been in this town long enough know that I saw this place is. Uh, it's neglected for 20 years you know and it's just getting worse and worse by day um i purchased this property and with the vision of restoring it back to you know what it used to be you know 150 people used to work there at one point you know so it has the potential you know but 
It needs a lot of work. Property and our proposed business, we de developed a plan that would be most cost efficient way to bring this property back to life. Um, we built a team and we registered our company as an own employee owned company. And we're taking the next step forward with this property, which this is the only way. Obtaining a cultivation license in New Jersey is extremely hard, like everyone knows. Um, the parameters set forth by the state are, you know, they are, they make sure they have the best of the best people. Like if anyone in the towns will get a license, a cultivation license till 2024. So there's no way there's no, like, you know, every corner you're going to have will be issued for the next three years. And unfortunately, this is a politically enhanced license. It's all about who you know in this license. Um, we worked very hard for this license for five years. We submitted all our application in 2018, 19 with 196 other applicants. Most of these applicants are big billion dollar companies that have the lobbyists right in their pocket and they put this whole thing out. You know, they don't have to do anything. We worked the hard way and we put this license together. Um, this, this state will only allow two cultivation licenses this term for Central New Jersey region as it is. So we have a very hard chance as it is, you know, and that's why we did what we did. Um, the CRC's deadline is August 21st. Without regulations currently in place, they want the towns to move forward, which, you know, we understand it's not, you know, it's common sense for you guys to walk out, you know. Um, but they also say right underneath that, that the state will not grant a license to any applicant where it's in, it violates township ordinance. That's the only sentence they put, that as long as you violate township ordinance, you're not getting a license. <laughs> Uh, my name is Hugh Giordano, uh, 57 Argyle Avenue, Blackwood, New Jersey. I'm here today as a representative of United Food Commercial Workers Union, UFCW. The UFCW is a national labor union of 1.3 million hardworking families, and we're the official labor union that represents cannabis workers from seed to sale, both medical and adult use, under the guise of the ASL. Um, and we have some of the best in the country. In fact, Virginia and Connecticut just, and I'm happy to say, stole our language uh, because it does create good jobs. Um, we currently represent medical facilities here in New Jersey. Um, these jobs come with a living wage, health care, sick time, vacation time, paternity leave, uh, vacation, and top retirement, and other training and educational benefits that don't come with uh, part-time Coles or 7-Eleven jobs. These are careers, no different than being an iron worker or a carpenter. Um, they provide middle-class jobs, not low-end, low-wage jobs. On top of that, these most of these folks that work in these facilities are educated, have degrees in botany, horticulture, chemistry. Even some of our retail dispensaries, our unionized facilities, they have pharmacists. So it attracts a high income uh, young worker. Um, we oppose this ordinance. It's a direct attack on workers. There's no two ways about it. It's attack jobs. Um, specifically when the Medical uh, Cannabis Act, the Jake Tonic Act, had labor language in it as well. Then just a six or eight month conversation. This has been a, a 2019 conversation um, and has been a huge political conversation. Um, the city of Bayonne four months ago passed an ordinance, uh, lays out application fees, renewal fees, what types of licenses they want, how many licenses they want, which ones they don't want. And they have a merit-based application system, which looks at standards such as labor standards. If they fought workers' rights in Illinois, they're gonna fight workers' rights here environmental standards if they polluted and used illegal pesticides and herbicides in colorado they're going to do it here standards for local ownership to make sure to make sure that we, that we protect folks who actually live and work here it has security standards as well uh the bayonne ordinance are they going to hire retired police officers are unionized facilities do that um on top of that the security standards are already pretty tight the the video cameras have to have by law 30-day backup they were going directly to the department of health now going directly to the state police. It's better than a bank. It's better than a Rite Aid or a CVS. Um, it's not an old cash business like everybody thinks. Um, so there's a lot of a lot happening here, um, and it's 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 sad to see that these jobs are going to be lost. It really is. Um, Montclair adopted the Bayonne ordinance. Highland Park adopted the, the Bayonne ordinance. Bass River adopted the Highland the uh, Bayonne ordinance. All different communities, all different types of 
uh, people, and they did it. So it can be done. It did. It was done. Um, I'm Sony, and I'm from Bridgewater. I'm on the board of the NAR group, and I wanted to uh, go off of what he was saying. You know, I don't know if you guys seen the Flemington Township ordinance. They specifically stated they don't want retail in their community, which you know is a, is a good thing in terms of cultivation licenses, because they know that will bring a lot of business. Like Nan was saying, this is a big job. That that site needs a lot of work. All the laborers we would use to build that are local, or the, you know, it has to be people from New Jersey. And the state is promoting that to us when we did the application that use New Jersey residents as your employees. Don't go out of state, you know, and that Flemington ordinance is, I think, a good thing because you can see that, you know, they didn't want to do something that was going to impact the community. That's why they kept retail out, but they let the cultivation go in. Thank God for I'm here representing my family. <laughs> um, so whether we like it or not, cannabis is legal. There's nothing we can do about it. I'm not that crazy about it, um, but people are gonna be able to have it delivered to their homes and live in township. That's just how it is. So when I think about that, I really, it doesn't matter to me if we um, allow retail, allow medical or anything like that in our township, because it's already gonna be. Oh both both um, Kuma and Crema, recreational and medical, uh, just make some, some of this uh, thought process or, or activity difficult. But, but it's clear that in 2011, the state, um, through the Agri Agricultural Development Committee, defined medical, medicinal cannabis as a crop. And they did that, it's not, it's not for us to do that. Um, it's also, yeah, we, we are, again, to repeat, we are exercising discretion granted to us under the recreational law. We were not given the authority or discretion under the Compassionate Care Act. So therefore, we cannot, we, we don't have any authority to take action in that regard. We are not taking action in that regard because uh, clearly it is, it is um, outside our jurisdiction. And clearly there, there is a process, there is a separate process and a, and a separate standard with regard to to the medicinal uh, cultivation, the entire the entire integrated process from growth to, to transaction, and obviously there there is a process in place where uh, grow license the ability to cultivate was regulated by the state because cannabis patients have been getting product for years now. Defines uh, states that cannabis does not include medical cannabis dispensed to registered patients pursuant to the Compassionate Care Act. I know it's very difficult and, and it, the things are similar, but they are, it is very, it is a very different um, statutory construction, recreational versus versus the, the recreational. We, we have, uh, again, based on the agricultural zone and, and the state ag board, that's one situation. The action we're considering tonight, again, is grounded completely in CREMA, the Recreational Act, because that's the only authority we have been granted to, to, to create. It's really good form to clarify what the ordinance does not deal with. It's to be as clear as you can as to what it does deal with. And my reading of this has been that it deals with recreation. So the, the proposal that we add a clause that clarifies what it does not deal with, is that recommended or is that would that be useful or is that it's simply a statement of of objective fact but it, it does it, again we, we don't have the we don't have the jurisdiction or authority if if you know it, it's clear what we are regulating and it's spelled out it's delineated properly go back and start over again if we start over again 818 is gone 821 is gone all six categories will be allowed well there, there's that i mean you state the general law of ordinance correct um state preserved land i understood it to be that you can only grow hemp i didn't know that they split medical cannabis from recreational cannabis on either of those types of categories there, there's 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 differing there's enforcement of that. It's it's highly regulated, as everybody has said. What you can and can't do. I don't want, I don't want to go into that without. But but point of ban on all six classes was as I believe stated earlier. The state hasn't released the regulations backing up the law, and so if 
if we don't opt out, then by definition, well, by statute, we're opting in to the state regulations that we don't even know what they are. And so specific to cultivation, we reviewed that with the planning board and other experts, and there's no way for us to know what the water usage would be. And we're a town with no public water. What would be the impact on neighbors' aquifer level levels and the like? So class by class, we're, we're put in a position by the state of asking to potentially allow whatever they're going to propose in the coming weeks and years, and it'll, it'll be modified. And so the judgment of this committee was, at this time, we need to opt out because the state can't tell us what we're being asked to opt in. I'll make it, um, a motion to adopt ordinance 2021-07 to opt out of cannabis all classes in the township. Oh, no, no, it's just saying that what it is here, it doesn't say you got a motion. Second? Roll call? Yes, yes, yes. 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 One is just a, a, the smallest typo, which I, I believe we can do. So if you have the ordinance in front of you under number two, so it's, it starts with, I, I, I'm sorry, we can, just so, if you follow along, so it's open close parentheses one, then a parentheses, then one, two parentheses. It says temporary political signs, maybe, there needs to be a space between mm -hmm. may and be. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. That one we can agree on. That one we can agree on. It's okay. a different so word. It's actually the next couple of weeks. I would, should, should we do motion one by one? Should we do a motion line? So it says temporary political signs may be placed on municipal property. The question came up, the town has right of way along all the roads. Is the right of way considered municipal property? As a clarification, as I asked the attorney, a right of way is a right associated with private property, but it does potentially grant, it could create confusion. So the clarification that I I would ask whether it is a meaningful change or not would be to clarify, maybe placed on municipal property, not including the right of way associated with private property. And then continue on. So just insert those words. Any discussion? I'll tell you, that sounds like it affects number three. I'm like the misunderstanding. It's back to the door. Well, that would be simplified. So if you notice at the start of the, of the italicized text, it defines temporary political signs are defined as pertaining to various elections, candidates, or questions. In number seven on the second side, we lost questions, and it just says signs for candidates shall be removed. I thought it would be helpful to clarify signs, uh, temporary political signs, using the definition up front, shall be removed. So that question zone would also need to be removed. No later than 14 days uh, after 14 days after the date of the election in which the candidate or question was considered for vote. I mean, signs that have to be removed in 14 days versus signs that have to be removed after 10 days is a bit confusing. I would I would propose that we strike the in case of primary elections signs of all candidates that fail to remain. The rest of that section, if you strike that. For the public who may be who is interested in this, we're going to the lesser standard of they have 14 days to remove rather than 10 days to remove. And I would ask the attorney whether that is also a change that could be made without republish, re republishing, because it puts the public in a better position rather than a more restricted. Stemmed from possible lawsuits by the ACLU, and after listening to the attorney here, this ordinance. Correct me if I'm wrong, it's his best shot at making something that may withstand a lawsuit. But then he says anything could be possibly litiga litigated. Uh, although it's never been done in the township with our existing law in the last 20 years, um, that anything could be done, even this one. And the only way to get out of it where there's no lawsuit is not to have an ordinance at all. Okay. I drive the township roads right now. I see Trump 2024 20, signs out there. I see banners, which are not covered by this and whatever. That's political free speech. Okay. I see anybody but Murphy out there. That's political free speech. 
the definition between free speech and a political sign seems to be very blurry as per his as per what he what i took away from what he explained i don't see anything wrong with the existing one it seems to work for the most part in my opinion i get them off of township property nobody's allowed to have a sign on township property but that's your decision to make and no ordinance to me sounds like the way to go because i see political signs all over the place today for the future is it a political statement is it not perhaps a, a gentleman's agreement for the candidates that after seven days after it's over you're not bound to take your sign down but it's a decent thing to do we live in lebanon township but it's a good community you lost be a gentleman to take your own signs down